Before we start, just a quick heads up. Today's video is not one of my regular scripted videos. Every once in a while, I just like to experiment with new formats while still packing in a ton of information. So if you do enjoy the style, let me know. If not, well, just stay tuned. I'll keep making the videos you know and love. All right, let's check this out. Some of you might already know what's in this guy since it's, you know, a package from Dust Filament. I know I'm really excited about this concept. I don't know how well it's gonna work, but I guess we're just gonna give it a try today and uh, see how well it goes. All right, so you might be wondering, why is that guy getting so excited about two coils of filament? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. These are some of the master spool refill prototypes. The idea is you buy them without the actual spool on it. This is filament like it would be spooled on a regular spool, but you don't have to keep buying new spools. So, so in order to use the master spool filament coils, you actually need the master spool itself. And that is two halves. One of the halves I'm gonna be printing on the Sierra 10. And for the other half, I'm actually gonna be using the Ultimaker 3, just because I've not used it in a while. Um, I still have like this massive 2.6 kilogram filament spool in three millimeter or 2.85. Though I guess I'm gonna be using the smaller spool for this one. Not sure if the Ultimaker can actually pull this big beast. So for the CR10, I'm gonna use the Prusa Slick 3R and use actually one of the Prusa profiles with a custom printer profile. Uh, and I'm gonna print that at 0.15 millimeters. And of course for the Ultimaker, Cura 3 or 3.1 and also using 0.15 millimeter layers all looking good let's get printing also I'm, I'm just realizing that this is actually going to be a 13 and a half hour print on the ultimaker and for the cr10 it's going to be 16 hours yep here we go now that i'm looking at it actually it looks like there's some sort of a deposit in the bowden tubes of the ultimaker 3. it looks like the last silver filament i printed left that in there Ready for takeoff. Yeah, this is looking good. Well, good job past Tom trying to explain why you'd have a biking segment in a vlog about 3D printing. Because vlog and sports and it was just below freezing and why not go biking and talk about a bit more stuff while I'm there. There you go, I hope you're ready for a road biking segment. Now, don't worry about me turning this channel into a full-time vlog. Think of this as an experiment. I just want to see how this entire thing works. Maybe I'm going to learn a thing or two from my regular content. Oh god, it is so cold out! Now, one thing I know that I'm not going to be able to check off of my vlog checklist is drone shots, because I don't have a drone. But, let's see, does this count? If I put this behind me, this is kind of like a drone, right? Woo, so hot! Now, I'd love to set you all up with a nice juicy time-lapse of the sunset, but I mean, this is what it looks here right now. So instead, how about time-lapse of this? Okay, that's all you guys are getting. This is getting too cold. Oh, fantastic ride, but uh, I'm glad to be back. All right, that was good. I think we should go check on the printers now. All right, the CR10 is going strong. It is looking good. Ultimaker, yeah, looking pretty much perfect. I guess like the next thing my vlogger's checklist is telling me to do is to make coffee, but it is 8.15 p.m. So if I have coffee now, I'm gonna be awake all night. I guess what we can do then instead is do the time lapse and make coffee and a slow motion montage tomorrow. Sound good? Let's go. It's a new day and oh my god, what happened here? Is that is that an appropriate vlog reaction? Uh, you guys probably saw it in the time lapse already and this print is, is, I mean, yeah, this has failed. What happened here is, you know how the Ultimaker has like the rod from left to right and the rod from back to front that actually moves the tool head around? The front to back one has completely fallen out because these blocks right here, here, let me show you. 
So these blocks right there, this one and this one, this is, that's where the rod is supposed to sit. These have cracks. These have like big old cracks going all the way through them. This one is okay because the rod is just pressing down, but this one, when this cracks, the rod is just free to pop out. So yeah, I don't think this print is salvageable at all. Let's go check on the CR10. All right, CR10 looking good. At least this has printed. It's a bit stringy. Like if you look at this, there's strings everywhere, but that's simple because I used the Mark II slicer profile that does not have a Bowden. So this is uh, with very low retracts. I'm just gonna go burn these off and then we should be ready to go at least for it for this half. All right, let's turn it off while we're working on this. Ah, better. All right, first step, wire brush. Second step, heat gun. All right, still not quite perfect, but this should work. So at least this one hasn't damaged itself. All it would take to repair it would be to zip tie this rod back in. But yeah, I'm gonna have to reprint this one way or another. And while that's printing, why don't we go make some coffee? If all you know is Starbucks coffee, you have no idea what you're missing out on. So good. Okay, that is done. Look at that, look at that texture. That is so nice. So one of the cool things about the master spool is that of course the spool itself is 3D printed. Um, whether that's a good or a bad thing, that's up to you. I think that is really fantastic because it opens up a load of possibilities. First of all, no matter what filament refill you use on your spool at any time, the spool is always gonna be the same. Now. This happens to be similar in size to like the regular 200 millimeter spools that everyone uses these days. This is the one that I'm talking about. You all know this spool type. But if for example your 3D printer doesn't take that spool or if it needs some other specialty size, you can just modify that spool to fit your exact printer. Like that's always gonna be specific to what you need. Um, for example, I had for the Ultimaker 3, I tried to use that blue filament. It didn't fit on the rack behind it because the mount on the Ultimaker is just the wrong size. It doesn't allow for those deeper spools. So what you can do with a master spool is just make this one perfect for your 3D printer and just swap out the filament on top. Of course, maybe one of these isn't going to be enough, but if you have two or three of these, you can just swap out filament as you need it because you can't just put filament on. You can also take filament off this master spool again and store it for later. And having that common size or that modifiable size can also be really cool for accessories. For example, for dry boxes, you just need the dry box for this exact standard size and you always know whatever filament refill you put on there that's always gonna fit on your spool and that spool is always gonna fit in your dry box so you're good to go there no matter what. So of course the other upside is that the manufacturer doesn't have to ship you a new spool every time you buy a filament. This is a lot lighter than the same filament with the spool on it. Actually let's go weigh that real quick. So let's see these two coils are 850 grams nominal and we're getting 905 and and 870, 89 grams. So both of these are probably a bit more filament than what's on the sticker. And if you put this in relation to the old classic spool, this is 213 grams. So if you buy 800 grams of filament on this spool, literally one fifth of that is just gonna be the spool. So what that means for filament manufacturers all over the world is that these coils with packaging and everything weigh less than one kilogram. And that's important because typically the shipping rates will go up around that one kilogram point. And in the case of dust filament and infinity blue, we actually ran into that exact issue. They had to cut down the spool size to 500 grams if they wanted to ship it somewhat affordably around the world. Now, you could just get 850 grams for the same weight and for the same shipping cost. So we've got the two halves of the master spool and the master spool coil itself. Let's get this on here. Give this a good listen. Doesn't that just sound fantastic? Okay, nicely vacuum sealed with the bag of desiccant in there. So what's interesting here is that the end of the coil has actually been bent over 90 degrees. So first of all, that makes it easier to find. It's not gonna slip under any other coils and you can actually insert it into one of these slots in the master spool itself. Also stickers, these are the same stickers you'd get on the usual roll and there is a sticker spot on that on the master spool as well. So let's put that on there. Oh, these are, these are quite sticky, but 
cut it good. So let's see, this should actually fit on with these zip ties on. That's a good fit. And then this end just clips right in here. Okay, perfect. And then you can screw on the other half. Okay, that's good. And let's just cut the zip ties. Where is the end? There's the end, okay. So yeah, this right here, this is like the filament retaining hole right there. So this goes through here. Doesn't kink the filament, doesn't like crimp it or anything. And that is actually, that is actually pretty secure. So that's not going anywhere. And also if you stack spools, this is not gonna break the end of the filament off. Okay, and that is your basic master spool with some filament on it. This feels, I mean, it's a bit loose, but it's gonna print. Like this is a proper filament spool. And it has another huge upside. You can actually measure the filament you put on your master spool. So if your manufacturer is ripping you off, selling you 800 gram spools, but it's only putting 720 on there, then you know, because you can weigh the filament. Now you can see how some manufacturers wouldn't like that, of course, but it's good for you as a customer. In the end, it's hopefully also gonna make things cheaper for you as a customer, because again, you don't have to pay for a new spool. You just buy the refills. And in fact, with dust filament, you're already getting 50 grams more filament for the same price. So, master spool assembled. I mean, this feels surprisingly much like a regular spool. Like, this is a fully functional, normal spool. Actually, it is more functional because the filament retainer is better. So I was kind of worried that this might be just like an experiment, like a geek stream, but it's just a normal spool. And how long did that assembly take? Like what, 15, 30 seconds or so? So if you think that this is a cool concept, don't just tell me or the community, let your favorite manufacturer know that, hey, you would be interested in buying filament in a master coil refill size. Maybe, you know, have them make it cheaper or maybe just have them throw in a bit more filament, save on the spool, save on shipping, everybody wins. If you know a manufacturer that is already making these, drop a link in the comments below so people know where to get this stuff. As you can tell, I'm really excited about this concept about all the possibilities it's going to open up if you're excited about it too give this video a thumbs up subscribe for more and i'll see you in the next one also let me know how well you think i did on the vlogging side of things i mean i've never done this before i have no idea how i did um whether you think this is worthwhile to watch at all or whether i should just go back to scripted videos let me know in the comments below thanks